Hi, welcome to SBR Videos. I'm Peter Loshak. We are doing our Major League Pitching Preview Show with Joe Duffy from OffshoreInsiders.com. Right now we're looking at the card for Wednesday, June 17th. Joe Duffy, you've had a profitable year in baseball overall, right? Remind us of that. That is correct. Um, you know, sometimes we record these a couple days in advance, but 9 out of 13 winning days as we record this, which again isn't us at our necessarily absolute best, but the summer months are always so kind where most of the industry literally or figuratively takes off. We continue to go balls to the wall, and you'll see that in the analysis at offshoreinsiders.com. All right. Well, Jonathan Neese has not been uh, really that good recently. He's been very hittable. And on the other side, Drew Hutchison for Toronto has actually been a very good at home. He has good home road splits, and he has repeatedly had sharp starts at home. Toronto hits lefties very well, and Neese a very vulnerable lefty. This might be a big play on Toronto on the run line based on the starting pitching uh, discrepancy here. What do you think? Not to mention, in addition to everything you said, Nice has historically pitched pretty poorly in interleague play. He's got a 4.91 ERA, and that's a 91 and two-thirds innings pitched. And I, I mentioned it on yesterday's video that, as a general rule of thumb, American League teams, they've been a profitable play in interleague play. And I think it's so much tougher, especially in a situation like this, where the, uh, Amer the National League pitchers have to adjust to the designated hitter than it is vice versa for American League plays to play without it. And with Nice, with him struggling lately, with him struggling long-term in interleague play, I would say that he's probably a good fade at this point. Okay, and then Felix Hernandez, right? We all know what happened to him in his last start. People are probably scratching their heads. What was that all about and what to expect from him here? He'll be at home against San Francisco with Madison Bumgarner on the other side. Bumgarner, you know, pretty reliable, pretty consistent. He should have a good start here, right? And the question is what to expect from Hernandez. Felix Hernandez, you are correct. Again, I, I have to say the word, I think at least once a video, we're talking about value. We're talking about a stud pitcher who is struggling. And Felix is one guy that I think every sharp in the world has a big, big red check mark next to him saying probably good, uh, r really a good time to fade him because he is struggling as of late. So I, I would definitely fade Hernandez or pass. Okay. And then Clayton Kershaw is a guy who has uh, started to bounce back pretty impressively. He's starting to get a little bit lights out-ish and the Dodgers have won six out of his last seven starts. On the other side, though, Texas has been winning. Wandy Rodriguez has been pretty pitching up pretty well himself and Texas actually won seven of Wandy's last eight starts but Kershaw again is starting to have those starts where teams get zero or one runs against him what do you think we can expect from this matchup and uh, Rodriguez three and one with a 2.70 e ERA over his last eight starts so that's a, a pretty long time and of course that was mostly facing the designated hitter so he is pitching very well another low scoring game of course if you got Kershaw pitching you know that you're not exactly going to get a very high total, so there's not much margin of error. Uh, you can't really make an argument for fading Kershaw at this point. We were earlier in the year when he wasn't quite pitching to his level, but at the same time, it's tough to make an argument against Rodriguez. So if anything, maybe look at the under, but fading Rodriguez is a tough proposition at this point. And, and Texas, they've been playing, they've been overachieving as of late. They yeah. have been playing pretty well. And then David Price, he's really been uh, stepping it up as well uh, recently himself. He uh, has two straight starts, I believe. We went nine innings, pitching excellently. And Johnny Cueto, we know that he has had some issues with his, uh, with his arm recently. His last start was okay, seven innings and four runs. I'm not sure what to expect here. Price versus Cueto, two big names. What do we expect from this pitching matchup? Who has the edge, Joe? Cueto, he, he you know, didn't pitch all that great. But keep in mind, the big problem that Cueto is having is that when he's struggling, He's got to fight through it because Cincinnati's bullpen has been used. So the Reds don't have a very good pitching staff, so they're hoping that they can get a lot of innings from Cueto. I wouldn't worry all that much about him. He's got a .95 whip, which even with some of the advanced analytics, I, I think that is arguably the single most important statistic when we're talking about handicapping pitchers. He is pitching very well. Yeah, you do have two very good pitchers here. The entire world knows it. I don't think there's any big edge with either pitcher. Okay, that's all I wanted to make sure we got to uh, for Wednesday, June 17th. What else would you like to uh, remind us of, Joe? Well, I know that uh, Despagne for San Diego, he had been a, a big splits pitcher, but lately he's pitching well everywhere. In his past four starts, he's got a 2.05 ERA and a 1.02 whip, but you know, he faces a guy, Jesse Chavez, who has pitched well. He has the worst run support in Major League Baseball, but he's got a 2.64 ERA. So maybe an under here is both of these pitchers are pitching well, and you don't exactly 
have, you know, the 1927 Yankees hitting two red-hot pitchers and two uh, so-so offenses. So I don't expect too many runs in that game. Okay, Joe, thanks so much.